All right, today we are working on an introductory assignment to JavaScript, um, and this is Watts 3020 Node-1. And by now you should have worked through the, the introductory assignment, um, Hello Cow Say, and in that assignment you would have installed Node, and that would prepare you to start working on JavaScript from the command line. So what we're going to do in this assignment is you kind of see it outlined here. We'll do a couple of tutorials um, and we'll have one that is sort of experimenting with types and variables, concatenation, and the JavaScript concepts of truthy and falsy. Then we will look at doing a couple of um, sort of mini apps on testing for odd even, testing if a string contains the word hello, converting a, a, minutes into uh, hours. So um, looking at the, how we can go between two units like that. Um, and then we're going to have a mini app where you will decide on a it's a do-it-yourself app. So you're going to um, go in and just come up with your own code and you'll be able to use the patterns that you've established here in these tutorials to help you with that and there's some suggestions um, so we'll get to that. So if you look at this readme you can see there's a lot of write up here on what we're going to be covering so kind of what the objectives for learning um, are are kind of summarized and reduced here so you can see we're going to get into logic, we're going to be looking at ternary operators, template literals, um, mostly it's an introduction to working with variables and types and you'll see that JavaScript is a loosely typed language meaning that you don't have to declare a type when you create a variable uh, but JavaScript does recognize types and we'll see how that works um, and uh, then at the bottom, you will see there's some project resources. So these are links to, um, to some documentation on the web, either MDN or W3 schools, or sometimes some authors that have put together some notes. Um, and then at the bottom, you can see the tutorials are outlined. So here we'll start in with experiments. We'll go to odd even, string contains hello, hours to minutes, and then your mini app. And to turn in this assignment, you, you will have forked this repo, you'll have cloned it, worked on it, pushed it to your own account, and you'll just turn in a URL for that. And there's some stretch goals in here too um, for you to work on if you want to. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you'll want to do is to fork this repo to your own account. All right, um, so I've got this uh, 3020 node one repo forked into my backup health account. You can see it's forked from SU Web Dev. And so the next step will be to clone this. So I'll get the address in the buffer, head over to the command line, and you can see I'm sitting here in my user account projects 3020 video, and I will just clone this, get clone. Oops. All right, and so now I have that cloned. I will use Visual Studio Code to open this up. Okay, code watts node one. And what we can see here is what we were seeing in the online. Uh, so looking back. Let's head back to our, yes, to our README here. So um, let's open up this README in preview. So I'll just open preview here. And we can now start following instructions. So I really recommend that you read through these notes. They'll give you some context for what we're working on. But again, our objectives are variables and variable declaration data types, so there's the number string boolean, looking at primitive versus object types. So primitive really represent values, whereas objects are, can contain values. 
uh, the string functions, we'll be looking at index of as a way to find values within a string. Operators, we will not look at every operator, obviously, but uh, we'll look at kind of how operators work to um, between to uh, do make some functionality with between vari values and variables. And then uh, we'll look at some logic and logic expressions, so the if-then-else. So um, this is all, and then template literals, this is a way to create strings that contain variables and using console log to output our uh, data to the terminal. So this is all covered in the write-up here and a little bit of uh, notes here on, on how you might translate uh, a flowchart, uh, thinking through problem solving in a flowchart and then translating it into code. Ternary operators, this is a way, a kind of a shortcut for if then else, and we'll use that, temperate literals. So, and then some project resources on that. So we're going to start in um, with the tutorials, and our first uh, tutorial will be using an experiment. Uh, and by the way, for our I.O. on this, um, we will use console log to output values, and these will always come out as strings. So you know there'll be uh, console logging of strings, and we'll often use template template literals to create the strings. We also have a local module in here, get args. So we see there's a folder get args, and then the index, and it has two functions: get integer args and get string args. And essentially, arguments uh, on the command line, you just uh, type in a string. It comes in as a string, and it can be converted into an integer or a or passed along as a string. So it's a way to pull data off of the command line. All right, so let's get in and see how all how all of this code will work in when we're interacting on the command line. Um, so first of all, I'm going to flip back and forth here to have a look at instructions. So starting with experiments. So we're going to see that there are to-dos in our code here. And um, in this experiment, we're just going to be uh, starting off by looking at value types. So let's take a look at the code that's provided here. In experiments, we have this index.js. So with Node, you'll usually always find uh, a, a, a directory with an index.js. And in order to run code in that directory, you really just need to specify node space, the directory name, and it will by default find the index.js. So if I open up a command line here, a terminal, um, and I'll look, see, I'm, I'm here in the root of this project. And I wanted to run, say, this experiments index.js. I'm just going to say node and then one experiments.js. And that's all I need. I could type in index.js, but it's not really necessary. Um, and when I run this, it is just going to output whatever my console logs are telling it to output. So you can see there's a lot of console logs because in this experiment project, we are not, we are just basically testing what happens with some operations. Um, and so we have a lot of console logs. However, right now they're not actually returning the right information because we haven't completed the to do's. But um, there are no inputs on this, so we're just basically doing some processing. So let's take a look at what we've got in this file. We have a set of constants. So one of the things that you'll learn in the reading is that we can use const to specify constant variables. And these are variables that you can't change the setting of over the course of the program. So I cannot reassign a value like hello to string value because it has been set up as a constant. And constants are handy because they guarantee that, that a value will not change. And if we have a value that we're using over and over again in code and we want to establish that as a fixed value, constants are the way to go. If we did not want it to be constant, we would use the let. So let x equal to that value could change. Then I could say, you know, x equals 3 works just fine. You'll also see var x equals 2. And that is a 
a, a different, this, the let provides scoping, which means it, it holds its value within a scope, which could be the whole page, or it could be usually within curly braces. And you'll see that more as you work with this code. But var would be more of a global variable. It's, it's a lexical scope, which means it's, it's within a whole function. And that can mean the whole, you know, the whole entire page, or um, it can, it, it has properties. And, and the var is an older method of declaring variables. So um, ES6, our latest version of, of JavaScript um, that we're using in this course, uh, would the preference would be to use let and const, um, but you will see the var used quite a bit. So just to let make you aware of that. But anyway, we've declared a bunch of constant values, and you can see there are different types. So I have a string value, I have an empty string value, I have an integer, I have an, a value of zero. I have a float value, so we've got a, a decimal place. Um, that's how we store floats. I've got booleans, true and false. I've got an undefined. And notice that's not quoted. It's it's just the word undefined, and it's equivalent to if I just say let x, the uh, that value will be essentially undefined. But I can also declare undefined by using this undefined word. And then null, which is another value, um, which you would have to explicitly, there's no way to, so the undefined is sort of a default value. If you don't provide a, a value, then the variable undefined is, is essentially undefined, whereas null, you would have to provide the value null. And then nan here is, is a variable, a const variable, that is taking the value, not a number. And that can be useful if we're trying to determine that the user entered a number or not. NAN is going to be a good way to test that. But we're going to explore a little bit what type NAN is. You know, is it undefined? Is it null? Or is it a number? So there's some some just kind of learning about how JavaScript deals with these types and the values uh, and how these variables take on a type based on the value assigned to them. So let's start in with the first experiment, and this is using the type of operator. So some of our operators are like plus, minus, you know, divide, and so forth. But type of, some of our, our operators are more like um, English, and type of is one of those. So, and it is an operator that will tell you what type value is. So this is a good way to explore if you have a variable and you want to test is this a variable referencing a number or is it referencing a string you can use the type of. So here I have the I'm just console logging and you can see here I'm just using the comma to separate string variable string so and then I'm, I'm got it my, my to do I want to have you, the, use, the, the creator here, type of string value. So what I'm saying is I'm going to console log a string, string value to identify this, then what is in that value, so that should be test string, and then another string is type of, and then the operator type of, and then string value. So um, just by doing that, let's just see the effect of that. So I'm going to open up the terminal. And if I run my experiments and then look up here at the top, you can see that I have output string value. And, the, and in console log, if I have a comma, it just puts a space between the two, the two chunks of data. So I have the string, and then I have the value of the string, test string, is of type and then the type of string value tells me it is a string. So that's to be expected. So let's continue on, and then we can explore all of these types. So type of, and then empty string value, type of int value, and VS Code is kind of helping me out here, int zero and type of float 
and then type um, bool. And we really want that to be the true type of false or bool false and type of undefined and type of null. So we're just kind of setting up this type of operator on all of our constants so that we can see how JavaScript views these types. And it's probably going to, you know, and I've got this set on auto save, so I'm not having to hit save, but I'm able to um, run this code over and over again. Let's see. And so I will go to my terminal. I'm going to clear it and do my experiment. And now I can see that all of these have been logged. So I have string value is type string, empty string is type string, int is type number, int zero type number, float is a number. So whether you have decimal points or not, they're, not, they're both numbers, boolean true and false. Oh, it looks like I have a typo here. Let's fix that. False, this is intended to be false. Okay, and then the undefined, notice that the undefined puts out a string undefined. So it is a type undefined, and then it is able to identify itself as a string, because again, everything that gets logged is going to be turned into a string. So when all of these type of the operator returns strings. Um, and then null is a type object. Uh, null is a, is of type object, and we, we talked just briefly about primitives versus objects. So um, strings, booleans, numbers are primitives, but null is actually of object. And we're going to study objects more in a, in a future module. We're sort of focusing on, on the primitives here. And then NAN, which are, are not a number, is actually a number. So these are some of the quirky things about JavaScript is that you know, when we can test, we can identify, use, use a test, is NAN, to test whether a value is a number. But in fact, and it will return false if it's not. So if I, if I say do an is NAN on it, the letter A, it's going to return false. But in fact, NAN is itself identified by JavaScript as a number. So the use of this is, again, that you'll find in code, sometimes you need to determine if something is a number before you try to use it. Because if you're planning on adding to it and you're expecting certain results, you need to know it's a number. So uh, we will, uh, that just, this is something you can do. And then um, let's just um, move on then to the next uh, set of tests. Now another important thing is um, the add operator with strings. So this is going to you're going to um, see uh, this kind of concatenation. Um, in general, I like to use template literals to combine uh, different values with strings. Um, but you can, in fact, add strings together with the plus operator, and that's called concatenation. You can also add strings to ints and vice versa. You can add it to floats. You can add it to booleans. So we're going to do an experiment here to see what happens when you use the plus operator with strings. So to do this, um, we're told uh, to uh, uh, just log the, the addition of these. So in this case, it's saying log string plus string. So we would just type in our, we can use our constant string value up there. So we can just say like string value. So this is going to give us adding two strings together and the value of that string is test string. And if I now just run this uh, down in my terminal and just take a look at that, you can see that when I added two strings, it just basically pastes them together with no spaces, no delimiters, um, just string to string. So we're going to do that with all of these. So let's go ahead and we'll add string value plus int value. 
um, we'll add int value. So we'll try adding it the other way to see if that makes any difference. Then we'll do, we'll add two int values and to our string, see what happens there. Because we start making predictions here and then we can kind of see if that if it works out that way. Like we've already seen that adding two strings just sort of pastes them together. Well, what happens when you add an integer to a string? What happens if you add two integers and then a string? We're going to see the effect of that. Now we're going to add string to float. And we're going to, and these are the kinds of experiments that as you're working on with a language then you're new to it that you would want to um, be able to just go off and do these little experiments. So string to false, uh, string to undefined, and maybe you already have some ideas about how these would work out uh, to null. Okay. All right, so we've, we've filled that all in. Let's go ahead and run this. And then we'll take a look at the output. So we added two strings. Yes, we've got that concatenation. So what's happening here is when we add a string to an int, the, the integer is actually coerced into a string itself. And whatever value is in that integer just comes out as if it had been a string. As if in, instead of saying equals 100, I'd said equals quote 100. And it works the same no matter whether it's at the beginning or the end. But now this 200 string, that's a little different. So in that case, I had um, int plus int plus string, and it actually calculated. So it did a numerical plus on those two integers, but then it did the coercion on the sum of them. So that might be something you wouldn't expect. Now with the float, it just goes ahead and coerces it into a string. Um, true and false, the Boolean values, they were not set up as strings, they were set up as boolean, but they too get coerced. Um, in fact, we saw in the first thing, it just console logging, anything makes it into a string. But in this case, we are logging the, the addition of two things. So we're seeing coercion happen through the operator, through the addition operator. Uh, and then we have um, true, false, and then notice undefined, it actually returns a string, is coerced into a string, and we get the value just undefined added to it. Same with null. So we're seeing that when you're using the, when you're adding to strings, you get this coercion effect similar to what you see when you console log something. One more thing, just to let you know, when you have a browser, so you can in, go into your browser inspector and you actually in your console of your browser have a full-fledged interpreter so you can test things here too like say I I said let you know float equal 100.01 I could say type of float right and it will return number so you can do these kind of quick tests once you know how to do them right in your browser so it operates exactly the same way as uh, the JavaScript that's running in Node. All right, um, so that is a good look at using the plus uh, operator with strings. All right, for this next one, let's go take a look at these instructions here. We are going to um, log some values. So here, we're looking at the difference between a plus operator and the plus assignment operator. So plus equals does both an addition and an assignment at the same time. And before I do this, uh, this I think it would be useful to look at JavaScript operators. We're not, as I said, going to cover all of them. Some of them you probably can guess at just because it's they resemble math that you may have, you know, seen before. So we have our basic plus minus. A multiply, divide, we're going to look at modulus, um, increment, decrement. But um, what I'm comparing now is plus, so just, you know, y plus 2, you know, and just basic adding 5 plus 2 to get 7, to plus equals, which is where I can actually do an addition and a replacement. So x ends up equaling the value of itself 
plus another y. So you can see like x plus it equals y is, a, is equivalent to, it's sort of a shortcut for saying x equals x plus y. So I want to take a look at that and uh, let's go back into our code then. And all I'm going to do is log values to see the effect. So if I say console log uh, s1, s1, s2, We'll just log, we'll just go ahead and log all of these values. We have S1, S2, S3. And so we just so I just add the string in front of it to sort of identify it, and then I log the value of it. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna use copy paste here. I'm just gonna at each step I'm going to log those values. Okay. And then I will see the effect of doing this. So and and basically what we're doing, so we're just initializing S1 and S2 to that string value. Um, so we'll probably see some undefines in here. And then I am adding the two and setting the the variable three to the sum of those two. And then down here I'm using that assignment operator. So I am now not adding the two adding two values and assigning it to a third but I'm adding S1 and S2 and assigning it to S1. So I just want you to see that in action because you will see this assignment operator. So if I run this experiment, oh, let's see, S2 is not defined. Okay, so what it's telling me is that I can't even log S2 because I haven't defined it yet. So if I wanted to take care of that, I could just remove this or another thing I could do is let is just assign set up an undefined for each of these let s2 so I'm actually declaring them now but I'm not using them I'm not I'm declaring them but I'm not assigning a value but you can't redefine a variable so let's look at the error message on that so if I run this you can see s1 has already been declared so you can only declare once so and since we've declared them we're just going to change that so once they're declared and they're they're not constants i can reassign them as much as i want but i can only declare them once so let's go ahead and run this again and now we can see them so in our first log so we've declared them so they're all basically going to get set to undefined here because I haven't provided a value. So um, I get test string, undefined, undefined. Oops, we want that to be three. Three, there we go. Okay, so just logging them, setting up a log. We'll run that. Yes, so we have test string. We, we did define that before we logged it by setting that value to s1 and then these two are undefined and then in our second one we've set s2 so those are defined but s3 is undefined and then in s3 we have set it by adding the s1 and s2 and we get our concatenated test strings and then in our final one where we've done s1 plus equals s2 we have now changed the value of s1 to the concatenated value so that is an example of, of actually changing the uh, one of the values that is involved in the operation uh, to hold the sum of the two values. So you'll see this, and this is an experiment, again, that you can easily run in the browser as well. But I think it's good to start thinking in terms of these little mini experiments. I'm going to do a little cleanup here. So when you're working with to-dos, we, we still have one more uh, um, experiment to do, but when you're working with to-dos, you definitely want to get rid of them once you've completed them. So um, let's just take out these to-do comments. There's no reason. You can add your own comments, and sometimes you'll use information that was in the to-dos, but you don't want to leave that to-do around. Okay. That should get us to a point where we're cleaned up. So now we're looking at truthy falsy. So this is um, an important concept in the way that JavaScript works. 
namely that if you have a variable with a value of zero, false, um, empty string, undefined, or null, and you test it, it will test, they will all test for false. So they're not, the only one that's actually false is the Boolean false. But, and you could, you could use, um, so if I have, let b equals false, if I really want to test for absolute false, I would have to say b triple equals false because um, that is testing for the actual value of false. And we and I, if I have a value like um, d equals zero, that that if I tested d for false, d equals equals zero. Sorry, triple equals zero. That would that would be false. That would not be true. D is not, or sorry, if I tested that for false, that would be this statement D equals equals false is not true. It is a false statement. But D equals equals false is true. And that's something that takes a little getting used to. We call this falsy. So we have this con you'll read about falsy, truthy, and falsy. Like if I had d equals one, that would that would come out as true. So and I could actually even just say if d and for and that would be a logical expression that would evaluate to true. So this is something that we do use um, and you'll see this used in one of the other tutorials, um, the fact that we can do this. But in order to get an idea about how uh, JavaScript does it, evaluates this, we're going to test truthy, falsy um, for each of the uh, types that we have above. Now we're going to use the ternary operator, and the ternary operator has a um, it has a syntax where I could have like a value. Let's see, let's see, variable. Let's see, if I had say let x equal two. Um, I can use a ternary operator such if I, I, I sort of a shortcut for saying if x equal equal two or it's actually a double equal it's doing the test that allows for truthy falsy if x equals two um, return you know x uh, else well, let's see, we would probably console log, console log x, well, let's see, if x equal that, well, let's see, we would say console log true, else we would console log false. So do you see kind of this, this if then else logic? is that we, if x equals 2, if we were just testing truthy falsy with the double equals, we would log that, yes, it's true, else it's false. Um, if, and, and really this double equals, it's just not looking at type. It's, it's ignoring type, but looking kind of at this value. Well, that can be shortened into x question mark true, and false. So it, you have your logical expression, which is x, at least you'd say x equals 2. Oops. And then you have your question mark, you have your true, and you have your false. So it's a shortcut for setting up an if else, and the question mark just, so this, this part. The, the beginning sets up the logical expression that you're testing, and then after the question mark, the first statement is where you do where you can report your true. Uh, you can do what you would do when the statement is true, and the second part after the colon is what you would do when it's false. So anyway, we're going to use this ternary uh, syntax to 
figure out to let it report truthy and falsy. So and it's going to be so to do that we're just going to say string value question mark true colon false. So what what's going to get logged here is if if JavaScript sees a full string value as true, we will get it of the word true logged, otherwise we'll get false logged. And we can do the same int value true false. So this is just a really quick way to see if a value is being interpreted as true or false. So we have our empty string true false and then we have our undefined true false. And actually ternary can be used for much more complex cases like you could actually have a whole set of expressions after that question mark. Although in general I would use an if then else if I had multiple statements to process after true or false. So uh, null true false and uh, zero true false. And I've kind of already told you how it's going to behave but we'll see if that gets validated here. And then our NAND what does a NAND get evaluated to? So if we now run this down in the terminal, we can take a look at what's going to happen here. So we can see that the string is true. So that means you know any, any string with characters in it will be evaluated to true. If I said if string value, that's ev evaluating to true. Um, int, any int value is going to be true. Now notice the empty string is false, so a string value alone doesn't go true, but a string value with characters goes true, but an empty string is false. And you'll see we're going to use that in a module, come, in a tutorial coming up here. Undefined is false, null is false, zero is false, and nan is false. So any one of these conditions, you know, would be if I was depending on you know, processing a string and it was empty, um, I could use, I could test for empty string just by, you know, I could test whether, you know, it, it was uh, empty string, just if empty string, you know, whatever the variable was that contained a string, if it was empty, it would test false. So these are valuable and you're going to see that we're going to use these quite a bit. All right. And let's make sure we clean up here our to-dos so we don't need our to-dos anymore. Okay, good. Um, let's go ahead and push this. So git status, uh, git add, git commit. Git push. I don't like to wait till the very end to push everything. All right, so that takes care of our experiments. All right, um, for our next assignment, we are going to be looking at, so we're in the tutorial section, the odd even assignment. And what we're going to be doing here is um, we will be using our module to get args, and we're going to allow our user to enter a number and we're going to test whether that number is odd or even and report that back to them. So because we're entering a number, we want to be sure that this is a number. We will use this is nan is not a number function provided by JavaScript to test our input. And then uh, once we've detect and the is nan input will tell us whether it's um, a number or not. And then we also want it to be an integer, so we don't want it to be a float. And we have a number object that has functions attached to it. Remember, we have, for all of our primitives, we have object wrappers, and they have some functionality. So we can test to see whether this is an integer as well. And we'll use the OR, so in your operators, we have, the, we have a set of logical operators, so OR, and the, the double ampersand give, is an AND, and the exclamation is a NOT. So these are really useful logical operators. And we'll be using the OR to test, um, you know, to make sure that it's, it's, it is a number. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, 
if it's not a number, we'll have this input variable and it, it, it should contain a number. Um, if it's not a number or it's not an integer, we're going to show it a usage statement. So these usage statements are really common in command line programming or command line uh, you know, applications because if the user is expected to enter something, an argument on the command line and they forget to or it's of this wrong type, the usage statement can tell the user, give them a clue rather than just throwing a big error that's hard to understand. So if, we're, if they enter something that's not a number or, or it's not an integer, we're going to report that back to them. And then um, to test for uh, odd even, we're going to be using the modulo operator. And that operator returns a remainder. So it's, it looks kind of like division. So if I divided something by 2, you know, I'd get you know 4 divided by 2, I'd get 2. With the modulo, I get the remainder. So 4 divided by 2, there is no remainder. And so it would be 0, but if I did 3 divided by 2, I would have a remainder of 1. So the modulo, and that's a good way to test odd even. So if something divides by 2 with no remainder, it is an even number. It has a, a remainder of 0. So this is a good test for even. And then we can just use logic if it's not even, it's odd. So that's what we're going to write in this um, upcoming um, odd even and so this is set up with to-dos. Now, um, to we have this getargs function that we've defined over here in the modules, the local modules. And don't worry too much about that. We, we haven't gotten to functions and such. Um, but uh, we can rely on getargs to get us an argument from the command line. And we actually also have a get integer arg. So we'll just go ahead and call that. Um, but even though we're calling integer arg, we really don't want to run our, our modulus operator unless we have an integer. So we're going to add, we have a to-do to add a test for isNan and not isNumber. Uh, and then if, if it does not, if it, if it turns out that it's not a number or it's not an integer, we're going to give it the usage statement. So we can just actually go back and copy and paste that. So we're going to call isNan on the input. And again, the input is what is the variable that is collecting what the user provided on the command line. So we'll take out this to do. Um, and then if it's not a number or not an integer, we're going to give it this usage statement. So we can just replace this console log with that usage statement. OK. Um, so let's, um, so if I, let's see, run this now, let's say I run it uh, node two, and let's say I don't enter anything. So I don't, so normally I'm going to be wanting to enter a, an integer. That's going to be the desire, but let's just say I run it without that. Um, what do we have here? Line 16. Okay. It, it, it's, complaining about existing errors. So I think we better do a little more coding before. So it's not going to want to run a JavaScript program that has errors because we haven't finished our to do's. But we'll do some more testing around that once we finish this. So the, uh, the next step is to complete the two to do about setting up the modulo test. So we're setting up a logical expression that does a, a modulo two equals zero. And that if that is true, that means that we have an even number. So we can do that. And then our, our and here I'm using the temperate literal. So if you can see how this works, temperate liter, template literal, I have this tick. And the tick is a symbol that is just to the left of the one on your keyboard. It's not a, a it's not a single quote, and it's not an apostrophe. It's a it's a back tick, and when you enclose your 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 whatever you put inside that tick, it's going to get put out as a string. And if you have a variable, that variable, if you enclose that in the dollar curly braces, the value of the variable will be turned into a string and evaluated. So I've got my template literal, and I'm going to just put that. So this one. If it's mod 2 equals 0, I'm going to output that it's even. 
and if it's mod 2 otherwise I'm not even going to test it I know if it's not even it's odd so and I'm just restating that the value is even the value is odd okay and then process exit is just a node command to, to end the program all right we can take out these to do's and now we can run this so let's uh, clear this and we'll run it and you see I'm getting a usage statement so the usage is saying that to run this I want to say node 1 odd even and run it with the integer okay so now I'm going to go ahead and enter what if I enter a Ah, it's still going to give me usage because A is not an integer. What if I enter 100.1? Ah, it's not really testing integer correctly. So let's take a look at that. So I, I, I clearly did not enter an integer there, yet it interpreted as an integer. And here we're going to have to look into our get arcs. The fact is... I did a parse int inside of this get integer arg. So I'm doing the right thing by testing for is integer here um, to ensure it's an integer. But as it turns out, because I'm calling get integer arg and I'm and in this integer arg I'm slicing out that that argument from the command line, the fact that I'm calling parse int is another function provided by JavaScript that actually turns whatever I enter into when I call into an integer so um, if it can you know if it's not if it's clearly not an integer it, it can't do that um, and it won't it'll just return nan but so this is kind of a relationship here between you know how you're getting your data and then how you're testing but it's always good to at every level try to ensure that you're getting the data that you want but in any case um, my 101 went in because it was able to turn that into an integer. Uh, so basically, I'm, I, I, no matter what, I'm guaranteed that when I go to, to do this div2, this uh, mod2 here, I'm going to be doing it on an integer. So now let's just try it with a value that, that really is an integer. And we get 4 is even. And if we do 1033... One was that be like one million thirty three? It's odd. So we've got a nice little tool here now, a little program that is able to report back to our user odd even. And granted, most of us don't need a program to to tell whether something is odd or even. Sometimes in your code, your code, you know, in order to say say you want to show every other line is highlighted. Well, that's an odd even test. And so in your code, it's very useful to be able to determine odd even. And uh, this mod 2 is equals 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 0 is a good way to do that. So let's go ahead and push this. All right. All right, let's look at uh, number three now. And here we have, uh, let's go take a look at the instructions out here. So here what we're doing is we're going to, it's often useful to be able to find out if one string contains another string or contains a character or a set of characters. And so what we're going to do is we're going to let the user enter a string, just typing it into the command line. And we're going to see if we can find the, the, the string hello in it. And we're, if we do, we're going to report back the position where it started. And if we don't, um, we'll just report back that it doesn't contain that string. So what we're going to be doing is um, setting up another usage statement. So uh, we're, we're actually going to... Now strings, you know, are almost like the default input. So testing for them is not so important. Um, but we do want to make sure that they entered a string and you can see what we've already got set up here is not input so this is plays into what we learned about truthy falsy that if if this input if they didn't enter a string it's going to be an empty string and therefore if i say not input so in other words 
it's not true. So in other words, an empty string. I could also maybe test for an empty string, but it's real common to say if, if not input, then I'm going to want to do my usage statement. And my usage statement for this is, I've got two lines here. So one of them is usage, node string contains hello, uh, index JS, and then a string. So to remind the user they need to enter a string. I'm also going to let them know that, hey, if your string contains a space, put it in quotes. Because I'm only picking up the first non-space. I'm only picking up the string up until a space, unless it's quoted. And that's just part of picking up arguments off of a command line. Typically, if I really wanted to allow multiple different strings, I could change how I'm pulling things off of that argument list. But I'm just pulling up up until a space. So if I have a space, I'm going to need to put it in quotes. So that's what this, this extra line in the usage statement is about. Um, now I'm going to check to see if it contains hello. So I have a logical expression to write. And what I'm going to use here is this index of operate, which is one of the string methods. An index of will, will search through my string starting at the beginning. And if it finds it, it will return the, the position at the starting point, And it starts counting at 0. Therefore, if it doesn't find it, it returns minus 1. So my test to see truth or false, if it contains that, is testing that the value returned by index of is greater than minus 1. And this is what I will use. So there are actually a couple of ways that you could do this, but this is one that gets used a lot. So if I put that logical operator into my if, and again, the, the syntax is always that the logical operator is in parentheses, then and I, and I find that it's greater than minus 1, that means that I found my hello. And so I want to report back to the user, and I'm just going to copy and paste this, and I've got a template literal here that I can just put in my console log that says the input contains hello at location. And notice I can, I've, I've been able to report back variables using this curly brace, dollar curly brace syntax. I can actually run a function in there too. So this will actually give me back the position at which I found hello, starting from the beginning. So that's really a handy way to get that information. Um, and then if, if of course, it, it didn't, if it didn't find hello, I'm just going to report that back. And I've got this in a template literal. Um, probably don't really need it in a template literal because there's no variables or functions called. But I kind of like using template literals just because they guarantee I get strings. And I can use that double quotes in there. I, you know, I don't have to worry about escaping them or anything like that. So let's go ahead and run this. And this will be um, the first node and three. And so I'm getting back my usage here telling me I need to enter a string. So if I if I do it with hello, of course I should find it. Where do you think it's the, the position will be? Where do we start counting? At location zero. What if I say I put what if I do this with and I want to put a couple of, of words in there like hey, hello. Okay. So now it's at position four. So zero, one, two, three, four. So this is just getting you used to counting from zero. Um, and then what if I just said blah? Then it says, sorry, input does not contain hello. So this is how we can test for strings and report back and use our template literal. So let's get that pushed in. Get, uh, All right. All right, so now we're ready to take a look at four hours to minutes. And I bet you this would have been better named minutes to hours, because what we're going to be doing is letting the user type in some minutes on the command line. So like 60 minutes, 160 minutes. And we're going to report back the hours and minutes. Um, so here we're going to be once again t making sure that we have a number because we're going to be running the mods the the, the modulo 60. Uh, so we will to calculate the hours 
we will just divide by 60 and do a two fix zero. That'll give that'll just wipe out. So if we have you know uh, 65 minutes and we have five minutes left over, but we know that we have one hour, we won't report the decimal portion of the hour. We'll we'll use the two fixed, which removes that that decimal point. But then we'll calculate the minutes using the modulo. So that'll give us the number after you divide out 60, how many minutes were left over. Then we're going to do a little bit just to check in our hours and minutes. If we had, uh, we want to know whether we want to report plural hours or singular hour. And again with minutes, same thing. And we can do that setting up a ternary where we look for hours greater than one. Then we want to report back hours and otherwise single hour. So those are just little niceties because you know we don't want to report back you know 300 hour. We want it to be hours. So let's go ahead and take care of those to do's and I'm just going to use copy and paste. So first of all if we look at the index here we're doing a get args and we're doing our integer args so we're pretty uh, good on getting that but we Still, you know, it's just always good practice in front-end programming to check your inputs. You know, I.O. is really important. You don't want to set up a bunch of processing on data that you didn't expect. So we'll go ahead and check that they did input something and that what they input was uh, that, that if, if it, that or that if they inputted something that wasn't a number um, and or it wasn't an integer that we want to supply a usage statement. And this is just being, um, you know, UI UX is not, you know, the using good UI UX is not limited to GUI. We like to do it in the in the terminal as well. It gives them a, the, the information they need to run this command correctly. Now we're just setting up to do's for, for calculations. So to get our number of hours, we just divide by 60 and then we're just formatting it to the two fixed zero in order to wipe out any decimal minutes. And then for minutes, we're just going to do a the uh, mod 60. So again, you know, if I have, oh, let's see, we can get rid of this and get rid of this. Yes, if I have a mod 60, that's just so if I had like 65 minutes, I do a mod 60, I have a five remainder. That means I have one hour and five minutes. So I want that five minutes to be reported. And then um, our ternary tests for plurality. I'm just going to get that in there. And again, for minutes. So those are simple tests. And I could have said, you know, if hours. Oh, it looks like I need. Yes. I could have said, you know, if hours greater than one, then you know, return hours, um, or, you know, or set some variable to hours, else uh, set the variable to hour. But, you know, I, I like this ternary for, for this ability to just quickly tease out one value or the other. So and then console log has been set up for us. So we're saying we'll take the input minutes is so many hours, so many minutes. So let's go ahead and run that. And let's see, we can just node four hours minutes. Okay, if I run it without anything, I get my usage statement telling me I need an integer. If I run it with 60, I get one hour and zero minute. You know, that's another thing. I that might be a good stretch. What if you have zero? That would really in English come out as minutes. So you might have to test for if it's greater than one or equal equal zero, then make it minutes. So that's an interesting stretch goal there. Um, let's say I do 65 minutes. Now I have one hour and five minutes. Let's say I do 165 minutes. Now I have three hours and 45 minutes. So we have a little tool that converts uh, our minutes to hours. And so let's go ahead and check that in. We've got that all cleaned up. Feel free to add your own comments if it will help you to better understand the, the pieces that you're working with here. Commit. Um, right, okay, we got that checked in.
All right, we've completed experiments. We've done some small programs. Now the next step is this mini app. And you're given an index.js. It's got some notes on it. These notes are repeated in, in here as well. And there's just some requirements. So you're going to write your own app. So it's going to be basically a small tool like we've just done here for a couple of programs. You need to use an if-then-else. Um, you need to use at least one operator. And you need to read something from the command line and test for type um, if needed. So um, here's some suggestions you can do. Temperature conversion, either Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit Celsius. You can convert pennies to dollars um, or dollars to pennies. So do some kind of a conversion program should be fairly easy to think through. Uh, if, you, if you want, draw a flowchart. I think that's always really useful. And then um, there are some stretch goals here too, so you can do some other types of um, you can you can do some other types of coding if you're interested in that. But you're going to do your own coding on this mini app, and so just you know have it report back your conversion values. So you'll be using console log, um, and you can use the module get string args or get in args for the input. All right, so that's the assignment. Ah, and just to clarify on what you're going to turn in. Um, you've been pushing all along if you've been working with me on this. You've got this this nodes one. All you need to turn in is the URL. So you can be graded directly off of this. Um, I can download it and run it. Um, I can look at it and see how it works. All right, good.